Before we discuss the gas laws, we need to talk a little bit about temperature and temperature measurements. The, one of the key terms you need to know is absolute zero, and that's the point at which heat no longer exists. And, and remember, the um, heat is molecular motion, so um, at minus 460 degrees Fahrenheit, molec all molecular motion stops. Um, we have gotten down to minus four, 459 but degrees Fahrenheit in a laboratory, but no one has ever been able to get down to the 460 degrees Fahrenheit to uh, the minus 460 degrees to stop molecular motion. So theoretically, that's the point at which it stops. Now, if if we use the Fahrenheit scale for these formulas that we use, this negative here causes an issue when you um, when you plug it into the formula. So what you have to do is use what's known as an absolute scale and that's where um, zero degrees all there's no molecular motion so it st starts at zero degrees at the very bottom of the scale and works its way up whereas a Fahrenheit a Fahrenheit scale starts zero degrees at um, well above where all molecular motion stops. So it kind of starts the scale in the middle of the absolute, if that makes any sense there. So just remember, you're going to have to convert to the absolute scale. Now it's simple to convert um, Fahrenheit to ranking, and that's what you would do. It's, it's They're proportional. So what that means is if you have if you want to convert from Fahrenheit to Rankine, you add 460 degrees Fahrenheit. And if you want to convert back, you subtract 460 degrees Fahrenheit. And so if you're given a formula to uh, plug into Dalton's law, you need to make sure that if they give you there, you are going to get a Fahrenheit temperature. You need, need to convert that to the absolute scale, which is adding 460 460 to whatever the um, Fahrenheit measurement is. So remember, absolute scales need to be used on, not should be, but must be used on all equations with the gas laws. Okay, Charles's law, that's our first gas law. What that states is that at a constant pressure, the volume of gas is going to um, decrease as temperature decreases. And the volume of gas, conversely, will increase as temperature increases, and this can be um, this can be demonstrated by I think when if you remember when you were a kid, I don't know if you've ever done this, but if you blow up a balloon and you have a big fat balloon full of of air and you place it in the re refrigerator or the freezer, that balloon just wilts down into nothing because you've decreased the uh, temperature of the gas inside of that balloon and the volume shrinks down and if you put it over applied some heat to that balloon you could expand that gas until you could burst that balloon now the formula that we have here is the that you see down here is for Charles Charles's law and when you see the VI that means the that's the initial volume and the TI means the initial or starting temperature. And then down below, that VF stands for volume final and temperature final. All right, so that's a key thing to know when you're um, figuring out your uh, gas law equations if you should run into one of those on the NATE exam. Okay, the next one's Boyle's law. That this one is at a constant temperature, the volume is inversely proportional to the pressure. So, picture a piston, and you have a. Uh, the piston is all the way at the bottom of the stroke. As you, as you increase the pressure and push that piston in, the volume of the gas will decrease. So it's inversely proportional. And a couple of things to remember also, like we stated earlier, with temperature, uh, math, it, it's important when you're doing mathematics with these gas laws, the pressure must be an absolute as well. And when you convert pressure to um, t 
to, to, to the absolute pressure, you'll be given uh, PSIG, which is the gauge pressure. You need to add 14.7 to whatever the gauge pressure is to get the absolute. So make sure that you convert to absolute pressure. Okay, this is um, Boyle's law again. Is if you inverse, it's inversely proportional. So if pressure increases, the volume decreases. And once again, this is volume final, and this is the initial or starting volume. And same thing over here for pressure. So make sure that when you're when you're if you're given a Boyle's law, that you are plugging them into the right place if you get a if you get a Boyle's law uh, equation that you have to to do okay com combined gas laws that's Dalton's law and Boyle's law put together and what this means is if, if you compress a gas to reduce the volume the pressure and the temperature both will increase and, and this is how air conditioning works so when you compress the refrigerant in the compressor um, the pressure increases and so does the temperature so then the on the flip side of the air conditioning system when you re expand the gas or reduce it reduces the pressure and reduces the temperature as well so that is combined gas laws the formula you see here below once again the I is for starting or initial and the um, F is for the final volume, pressure, and temperature. Dalton's law. This is one, this pertains to air conditioning as well, and this is the law of partial pressure. And, and what this means is if you have a mixture of gases in a container, the, the pressure exerted is going to be equal to the sum of the pressures of these gases if they were in the container alone. So if you have one gas that exerts 10 psi, you put the other gas in there that would exert 5 psi, the total is going to be 15 psi. This is where in an air conditioning system if you don't have straight refrigerant and you have nitrogen or any other type of gas in there other than um, pure refrigerant, that's why the pressures are thrown off is because of Dalton's law and the law of partial pressures. Okay, that's it. Uh, make sure that you practice your formulas and you can find them on the formula page and understand what the VI and um, PI, VF, and PF stand for and you'll have a few of those in your uh, practice exam as well.